Hey, yo. Welcome back to AIW's The Card is Going to Change. My name is Ronald Two Legs. As always, joined by AIW owner John Thorne. What's up, Thorne? It is SummerSlam week. Oh, terrifying. Terrifying week. <laughs> You're not fired up, dude? Terrified. Absolutely terrified this week. Uh, ooh, got all get, got all the final numbers for Thursday. Made me physically nauseous today. So. <laughs> to look at that number. Peak of the mic. Peak of the mic. I'm so, so nervous. Oh, jeez. That was uh, a r- yeah. rough one to swallow. <laughs> Tough pill to swallow, yeah. Well, oh, it's like double, ab- double, uh, double absolution. So, double absolution. Uh, so, fuck. Hopefully, uh, we get d- double absolution attendance, which not looking like it so far. So, we need a big, big run. Big run this week. Yeah, uh, we're looking at hard sell podcast. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. You know, like, uh, I'm still kind of in that same boat. It's just like, we've done everything that we can do. You know what I mean? Like, I think that we've put together, like, such a diverse and just, like, unique card, you know, uh, hitting kind of all ends of the spectrum, you know, very high caliber talent. Uh, I don't know, you know, what else we could do. You know, we spent a lot of money, invested a ton of money on this show Thursday. I mean, you know, if people don't come to support it, they don't come to support it. And, you know, I, I don't really know. You, you know what I mean? Like, sure. I don't know. I don't know really what else to say <laughs> about what, it. it. What it more just, do you want from us if, if you're not showing up? Because, yeah, the lineup is, is pretty incredible. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Wadsworth did his, you know, his analytics today. We're, we're fucking, we're, we're pretty light right now as, as of this recording uh so you know uh pretty much have sold the floor and that's pretty much it so you know not a lot of ga is gone at all uh so we have a lot of work to do uh i would say we're about 500 off the pace right now for the break even uh so it seems pretty highly unlikely that this is going to be a success on thursday night uh which is uh you know pretty discouraging to be honest but uh trying to you know remain positive uh you know hopefully that you know there's going to be a lot of energy you know in the city coming up you know over the next couple of days and hopefully you know we can you know catch that momentum and ride that wave in the thursday nights uh you know i i just i really don't know what else we can do to 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 make it happen you know what i mean yeah i mean we lowered Lowered the GA, kind of kept it at that $15 price point. I'm trying to keep it low for everybody. I mean, I'd hope to say, you know, I'd like to see a big run on, you know, tickets day of, day before, you know, with people getting into town and, you know, starting to look around and see, hey, what else is going on? You know, they'll see see those flyers, see that ad, and say, hey, let's go check out, you know, the local guys. Um, the card, as you've said, it just it has something for everybody. Um, there's, there's every piece of wrestling, in my opinion, in this. Uh, you got women's match, you got tag team stuff, you got a scramble, you got international talent, you got some of the top guys right now, you know, you got ex WWE guys, you got, I mean, there's just, I don't, I don't know what more, you know, people are looking for really. Yeah. I mean, I, we really kind of, I felt threw down on this card quite a bit and tried to hit all those kind of different categories and, you know, just offer that you know full kind of range of of everything and uh you know i I think it's really good show i think it's really good card i think it's going to over deliver as far as in ring is concerned uh really kind of you know focusing on that in ring uh, for this show you know as opposed to maybe sometimes storyline stuff or you know spectacle stuff Mm -hmm. uh you know that that we focus on you know primarily throughout the year leaning more into you know just the in-ring stuff you know fucking kenta you know i mean yeah kenta's coming back come on so yeah i mean it's a very expensive show uh i, I can't stress that enough uh you know I, I think you know we were all so uh you know so confident uh going in the absolution and it, it missed the mark a little bit still you know was you know, you know still did well but did not meet our expectations <clears throat> and you know i would hate for this to fall short again um you know i think uh if this falls short you know i think 
we're certainly going to reevaluate the schedule in the greater Cleveland area as a whole, uh, for sure. And, you know, kind of uh, just see, you know, where, where things, uh, where things kind of, you know, fall after this, I guess. Where the chips fall. Yeah. I mean, cause at that point you got to think, I mean, you know, Cleveland seems to be such a hot market for wrestling, but you know, just a lot of stuff going on, a lot of, you know, a lot of shows out there. It's, you know, pick people are picking and choosing their content, uh, you know, where they want to, where they want to go and what they want to do. And, you know, you can't just, can't just keep taking a loss. That's a thing, you know, with a card like this. I mean, I can't even imagine, like you said, the price range just for, for this card alone is, is, uh, I mean, I'm not going to say the number. I'm not going to say the number. I know you know the number. Yeah. I'm not going to say the number, you know, I'm not going to put it out there, but it's, it's It's staggering. staggering. (laughs) You know, it's a car, uh, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom about it. I'm trying to keep the positive momentum or positive, you know, energy going or whatever. It's just, uh, it, you know, it is a little, you know, it's it's frustrating because, you know, I, I think that we really threw down on this show. And I thought that, you know, <laughs> we would be so far, you know, so much further ahead than we are today. As far as you know, where the tickets are at, and you know, especially you know, SummerSlam's got over fifty thousand tickets sold. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. fuck, you know, we got we don't even have three hundred sold. So that's you know, that's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, I mean, it's concerning. Like you said, they have that many tickets sold for SummerSlam. You know, these fans got to be you know going somewhere. You know, they can't all be flying. You know, people coming in out of town. So, you know, you would hope that. You know, a lot of these wrestling fans that reside in Cleveland or the Cleveland area, you know, going to make a weekend out of it and come up, you know, Thursday and check us out. Um, the card, you know, you don't see a card like this in this area around it anywhere. I mean, this is, you know, sometimes you get a card with one or two, you know, big name flying guys. This is, I mean, this is every match has has just marquee talent in every match, uh, in every in every facet of wrestling. This has something with a big name, big time attraction. Uh, it's not cheap, and you're just not going to see a card like this very often. You know, that's just not how you know AIW tries to. You know, like you said, a little bit more centric on on storylines and stuff like that. So we don't put on a lot of these. You know, big indie super shows, and you know, I don't think any many many other companies in the area can afford. You know, the lineup that we're looking at today. So. Come on out, you know, if you haven't got your tickets, $15 general admission tickets. Uh, I can't think of a bad seat in that general admission up in that mezzanine. It's all really great seating. Uh, so, I mean, come on out. Check us out. Uh, you want to go over this yeah, car a little I bit? Mean, yeah, let's go over it. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, like I said, I'm trying to keep the uh, positive positivity going. I, I really do think that we are going to catch some of that momentum. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of crazy possibilities that are, you know, cooking up still here in the, in the background that I know that you're aware of. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, uh, I would like to have a lot of people in there, you know, for stuff like that. So, um, you know, 15 bucks, you, you know what I mean? Like we can't go much lower than that for, for what we're offering. Uh, it, you know, to be perfectly honest, we probably should have charged a little bit more, but it, you know, the 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 business plan was which i don't know if it was a good plan or not was everybody complains about the fees everybody does that we take a loss you know in hopes to get a greater volume but you know what i mean like it seems like we're just taking a loss <laughs> we're not getting a greater volume you know so like that's just uh i don't know it's just one of those things you live and you learn like uh we actually uh you know pedro and i had a meeting today and you know the 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 alternative may be to go much smaller building way more expensive tickets <laughs> so like uh to make it more of a kind of um you know supply demand situation so that is something that we're kind of uh discussing as far as you know maybe that is a solution to to this problem of we never know where things are how things are going to go until like the day before or the day of because you know with such a large building people know that they can wait to decide you know what i mean right, so like right. we're always just kind of you know just standing here like how is it gonna go yeah uh so you know the alternative is maybe we're saying maybe we find a much smaller building <laughs> and you know we raise the ticket prices and then 
you know, once they're gone, they're gone. And that's, you know, uh, so I don't know. We're, we're, we're going back and forth on it. Um, but, you know, like, uh, we just know that something's got to give somewhere to where, you, you know, we can't always just kind of, you know, not know what we're walking into. And, like, you know, we, we've documented, you know, on this podcast, you know, like, this money has to be fronted. And it is tough to front something like this you know what i mean it's yeah money has to be borrowed and you know like it's uh it's it gets you know what i mean you get you get spread thin very very quickly in these situations uh so you know uh there's going to be a lot of things you know obviously SummerSlam is a once in a 20 30 year situation so we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to pass it up. Uh, we are, we already had our schedule in place. This was obviously added after we had that schedule in place. Um, so, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not, you know, it, 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 it's not something that we had, you know, we had planned for, but, uh, you know, in the future we're going to maybe make, uh, I don't know. We're, we're gonna we're gonna try to be a little bit more calculated about things. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I mean, it, it's probably. I mean, I don't deal with any of the stress that you deal with, but I would have to say I would have to assume it's a lot, a lot of stress on your shoulders. Like you said, kind of waiting to that last kind of day of because we've just been getting so much walk up, and I think that is a big point with what you said with the temple. I think that people know that those mezzanine, you know, and that floor seats, I've, I've actually seen so many people, hey, are tickets available at the door? A lot of people asking, are tickets available at the door? So I think, you know, a lot of people are, you know, kind of waiting these days, you know, with the with the ticket situation as far as at the temple, you know, it's very rarely, you know, it doesn't come, we've never sold it out. So people, you know, they they think that, you know, we'll just get them day of, which I'm sure has got to be a stressful thing for you. Right, yeah, I mean, you know, and listen, I would love to fill that mezzanine on Thursday, even on the day of at this point. Uh, I do think that, you know, Thursday <laughs> will probably be the last time you see us at the temple um, for the foreseeable future. Um, I just think that, uh, you know, while we continue to grow in there, <laughs> I do think, you know, just the stress of how this all goes is not, you know, uh, there, there's there's so much room for us to grow but there's also just all these other kind of you know uh, intersecting issues that happen and you know like this situation to where you know we just don't know how things are gonna go until the show starts you, you know what i mean so like yeah. it, it's just uh it, it creates like this whole other you know elements so we're certainly um you know we'll looking at different uh different things for next year and um you know we don't have anything else in the cleveland area you know for the rest of the year after wrestle rager so um you know we're definitely kind of kind of going a little bit of a break anyway so i mean i know you can't elaborate much but if i was a betting man and uh, i was gonna take a gamble on if some of these things were gonna happen or not i would i would buy that ticket because if they come through if the, if the if the bets come through boy are we gonna see a show i mean it's already gonna be incredible but if some of these things that uh you know are possible to happen happen wow i, I would want to i would be i'd be uh, pretty mad at myself if i missed it i guess is, all, is what my point of uh well, I'm, I'm not jinxing any of that. I'm not elaborating <laughs> on any more of that. Absolutely. I mean, I would be pretty mad at myself if I missed this card in general. Like I said, you run down the card. I mean, you got it's starting off, like you said, Kenta coming back, this time versus Broner. Last time we saw him against Dom was a great match. Another, this is going to be another hard-hitting, just incredible, incredible match. Something, you know, you don't you don't need no big storyline. This is just two big guys just going at it. Hard hitters. Just, it's it's going to be a great match. I mean, to be perfectly honest, um, when I came up with the, what we were going to do for this show, I was I was just actually watching <laughs> um, Kenta versus Dom, and I said, fuck, we got to bring Kenta back. And I had reached out to Kenta as soon as SummerSlam was announced. Mm -hmm. And we were talking, and... 
he just, you know, he said it was all contingent on if he made it into the G1 or not. <clears throat> and as soon as he uh, did not qualify for the G1, um, you know, he reached out and said, you know, is this date still available? And I said, absolutely. And we got a deal done, like, probably while he was, you know, in the locker room, <laughs> you know, like uh, in Japan. And, uh, you know, I announced it almost, you know, as soon as I, as soon as I could possibly get a graphic. I mean, like, Kenta was the, the number one draft pick for this show. Um, you know, I, I just think that, uh, him and Dom was one of those just iconic, you know, I don't even know if you want to say AW matches, just, iconic independent matches that have happened in you know northeast ohio you know maybe ohio maybe just independent wrestling as a whole i don't know uh but they had just a fucking incredible match um and all i could think about is fuck like kenta and broner is just like i was just like foaming at the mouth for what that could be yeah Right. I mean, I saw a lot of people talking about that outside of the Northeast Ohio area. I, I would have, I would have leaned to, you know, I would say I would agree with you. That just was an incredible independent match because I know that, you know, kind of got out of the realms of Northeast of Ohio, just, just in general in India. I know a lot of people were talking about it. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, this Kenta versus Broner, uh, when you, when you told us in the group chat about that and had the idea and then it went around, you know, who he was going to face. Um, I knew for sure that that was going to be one of my matches of the night. Uh, Kenta, big fan of Kenta, but everybody knows, big fan of Isaiah Broner, and to see those two go at it is going to be uh, it's going to be quite a match. Yeah, I mean, I just think that this is, um, you know, that's what's interesting is, in, in, you know, I was actually talking to Pedro about this is, uh, I think that maybe um, one thing that is apparent about this. SummerSlam weekend is it is not a WrestleMania weekend because uh, stuff like this did not go as wild as maybe it would have on a WrestleMania weekend. Um, but I mean, fuck, like if this if SummerSlam wasn't here and we were running a regular AW show on a Friday night. This would go go fucking wild, but we got to do it on a Thursday. You know what I mean? Like, it, mm -hmm. so I, I don't know. There's so many different factors like that are impacting our position. I feel you know, like we're always here. There's other things that aren't always here. Like, uh, <laughs> there was a part of me that did want to sit the whole fucking thing out. Now we're running two shows. I, I don't know, but uh, that's why I just wanted to go fucking super fucking super hard with the whole lineup uh but one thing that's apparent is that, like it doesn't seem to have the appeal of like a wrestlemania weekend with these big marquee matches you, you know what i mean like it just doesn't have that i don't know like it doesn't seem like we're getting the travelers in from out of town like a wrestlemania weekend would um yeah. you know and i don't know i mean Maybe SummerSlam just isn't that destination like a WrestleMania is. I mean, you know, obviously WrestleMania is WrestleMania, but I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I used to, I guess when I was a kid, I always thought it was almost like a second WrestleMania. You know what I mean? Like SummerSlam was always just such a big deal when I was a kid. Um, I don't know if maybe that's just changed over the years. It's not as much of a big marquee show, but... Um, it seems I don't. I, I would think you'd, I'm surprised that there's not as you know more people traveling in. Uh, maybe do you think I, could it have anything to do? You know, Cleveland doesn't seem you know at face value that it's some sort of uh, you know tourist destination. But I, I always mean, laugh when I see stuff like that online because Cleveland. I mean, if you don't know about, I'm mean, Cleveland has a lot of great stuff, great food scene, restaurant, bars. I mean, there's a lot of lot to do around here. I don't know. Yeah, and I, I mean, even, you know, even GCW had floor seats still left. Like, uh, you, you know, it just, it's, I don't know, you know, like, I feel like people are not taking advantage of this, op the, uh, this entire opportunity of what this, you know, what this weekend could be, you know what I mean? Uh, because it's not going to, it's not going to happen again. Uh, 
and you know certainly if you know there's all these rumors of if AEW is going to bring a big weekend here you know with these reports of this you know tax incentive or whatever like yeah <clears throat> i mean you know if these events can't be supported you know what i mean like russell if russell Khan doesn't do good people you know like if gcw doesn't do good if we don't do good like you're not going to see these you know these events pop up around down like this you know that's just you know that's just the nature of the beast so i mean i'm not going to complain this whole podcast you know it's just uh, a <laughs> lot to go over <laughs> yeah yeah it's just a lot of factors a lot of things to discuss as far as you know with the weekend SummerSlam, but getting back into the card, uh, another name that I know a lot of people were very excited for to come in uh, since his release from the WWE, we got Heath coming in versus Eric Taylor. Uh, Eric Taylor, fresh off the loss of his intense title. Uh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen any of the graphics, uh, but uh, we're gonna have you know Wes fresh off that defeat. It seemed you know a hungry guy. I'm um, going to, you know, looking to try and prove, you know, his value and his worth and what, you know, show what he can do against a big name, you know, ex WWE guy. I mean, I'm sure this match is going to be great. I think this is a perfect matchup for Eric Taylor. I think Heath has been probably one of the most requested, like, quote unquote, you know, ex WWE people ever in the history mm-hmm. of AIW. Like, we get requests for Heath all the fucking time. Uh, I think that this is going to be a perfect, you know, kind of the that perfect matchup for Eric Taylor. <coughs> um, Heath seems to be one of the most kind of popular people behind the curtain as well. Uh, and I think uh, the real matchup is going to be Heath at old 86 after the show, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Can't wait for old 86. I love that place. Which, uh, you know, shout out to Old 86. We're all going there. They have also high expectations. So everybody make your, you know, everybody that is coming on Thursday night, make your plans to get the Old 86 on Thursday, you know, Thursday immediately after the show. Uh, It was a wild after party after Absolution. Uh, We got to top it this time. A lot of fun. That place is a lot of room. Uh, they had they had wings and stuff. They had food, great drink specials. That place was cool, man. Uh, I know it's some people last time were complaining it was just street parking. There was a ton of parking everywhere, but the inside of the place is big too. There's a whole outside back back garage bar type area. It's great. Definitely come out to old eighty six. <clears throat> uh, looking, moving forward in the card here, another name coming in, uh, another return though. We've had this guy a couple times. Uh, Anthony Green coming in versus the newly crowned Intense Champion Wes. Uh, Wes Barkley got the Intense Belt back. We had him. We had him wrestle once, and then apparently uh, he refereed once at AIW many, many years ago. Interesting. <laughs> which I didn't know about. What she told me when we booked him as a wrestler, and he showed me a picture of him as a referee at AIW. <laughs> okay, I, w- I, I was going to no- guess Clemens mentioned that. He seems no. like he would know. No, he's like, look, I refereed here once. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No fucking idea. <laughs> uh, but uh, he is uh, probably one of the most probably under talked about wrestlers, probably on the scene right now. He's been doing extensive work in Japan for Noah. Uh, and I think that, you know, for the kind of un- uninformed AW fan, who maybe don't know much about him are not gonna, you know, are probably going, who is this guy? Who is this guy? This is a gigantic test for Wes Barkley. Like, uh, he's probably one of the most talented unsigned guys on the scene right now. Like internationally decorated, uh, just, uh, immensely talented, a huge threat to Wes Barkley's intense title. I, I don't think people understand uh, what Wes is walking into on Thursday night. If you are unfamiliar, do yourself a favor and try to get familiar before Thursday. There is a ton of footage of Anthony Green out there for you to see on YouTube. I highly encourage you to you know do some studying <coughs> before you walk into the temple on Thursday night. Uh, I think you're going to be quite impressed with with this guy. And I think, you know, this is probably, you know, outside of maybe, you know, the Matt Cardona, Brian Meyer stuff, this might be like the biggest test of Wes Barkley's career outside of those, you know, those two other guys. 
Yeah, I mean, definitely I can't think of anybody he's really worked, uh, you know, that is as internationally decorated, as, like you said, as Anthony Green. Um, and I got, you know, a guy who has ties to the area, has been here before, you know, uh, somebody you know, a little underrated, you know, maybe got a chip on his shoulder. Could definitely see, you know, a, a quick rain here if Wes isn't careful. Um, I mean, I think I think Wes is up to the challenge. I think, uh, you know, Wes has got a second win with his belt. And, he's, uh, and another thing is, you know, formerly signed to WWE, all those guys are always trying to get back. You know, there is certainly potential for WWE scouts, WWE, you know, personnel to be in the crowd on Thursday night. Everybody is looking, you know, for that you know for that platform i i think anthony green is certainly not going to take that possibility lightly absolutely yeah i think everyone you know just with the circumstances is going to be working extra hard so yeah west west definitely needs to keep his head on a swivel i would say uh, moving forward in the card, another another big name marquee, you know, tag team here. Uh, one of, pound for pound, one of the the best tag teams on the independents, if you even want to call them not even independent. I think they're signed to uh, TNA, correct? Uh, the Motor City Machine Guns taking on PME. Uh, no, they are City. currently uh, actually you're just incorrect. expired, right? Or yeah, something. They're currently uh, it's a big mystery as to where they're going. People think they are signed somewhere, but nobody knows. They think they are heading somewhere that is not okay. TNA. All right, that uh, that was I. I got it confused now. I remember now. Yeah. So this may so, you know could be one of the last times to see him. <laughs> right. And I mean, I don't have any information on that. They have not tipped their hat to me as you know to what that is, uh, where they're going, if they're going. You know what I mean? That seems to be the the big speculation. I didn't ask. I asked if they were available. They were available. Uh, so um, I know that you know they have really wanted to work with PME since around 2019, uh, and you know we're finally able to make it happen here in 2024. Um, so yeah, this is you know this is you know about five years in the making, you know, four or five years in the making here. Um, and, uh, I think that this is, uh, you know, by all standards, this is, you know, an independent wrestling dream match, you know, cause PME is no longer the AW team, you know, PME is everywhere now. PME is, you know, they are in AW, they are in Chicago, they are in St. Louis, they are in upstate New York, they are, you know, in Erie. They're all over the place at this point. You know, they are becoming the tag team of the Indies, <laughs> but they have never got in there with the Motor City Machine Guns, who have been the tag team of the 2000s. So I think that this is by far the biggest test that they could ever have and um you know for their first tag team title defense you know on their their fourth reign it can't get any bigger yeah yeah i mean we're gonna need all all the pme heads out there because yeah this is uh like 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 thorne said it's not, not i haven't seen a bigger challenge for these guys i'm excited I mean, for it though this match alone you could see for 15 dollars is honestly insane to me you, you know like uh I, like looking at this card like this is this should have been one of those like 25 30 dollar ga cards easily <laughs> but it's 15 bucks i mean th th there is a lot of fucking good stuff this this match alone could main event any indie in the country easily no doubt oh, yeah yeah, I mean, oh, for I've sure. no, there's no, there's no question. There's no question. A bunch of matches on this show could main event any indie in the country. You know, no question. So, I mean, it's we need as many people in that building Thursday night as humanly possible. I mean, if you're on the fence about it or like, ah, I don't know, uh, just fucking come. You know what I mean? It's fifteen bucks. Come on, you have fifteen dollars. I couldn't imagine, yeah, turning down, seeing some of these matches, you know, for fifteen bucks, like you said. I mean, I would, I'd pay, you know, fifteen bucks for each one, you know, each one of these alone is worth the fifteen bucks. Just, you know, what I mean, singular. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fifteen bucks. Come on down. It's kick it. We're kicking off WrestleMania weekend. 
Like, it's going to be an amazing weekend in Cleveland. Like, we want to set the precedent. You got us Friday, or you got us Thursday, you got GCW Friday, you got us again Saturday afternoon, and then SummerSlam Saturday night. I mean, it's going to be jam packed. You're never going to see a weekend like this again, probably, in, you know, as far as wrestling is concerned in the Cleveland area. Come out and enjoy it. You know what I mean? This is probably a once in a lifetime thing that's going to happen in Cleveland. Don't fucking waste it by sitting at home and doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, you got to figure this is a once in a once in a decade, couple decade type AIW card. I mean, this is this is pound for pound, some some heavy hitting type stuff. Well, yeah, but not even that. Like, you know, when when are all, like when is something like this going to happen? Probably in Cleveland. Like uh, right. again, maybe there's the rumor of maybe AEW is going to bring something to Cleveland, but like even still, like when are you going to get? you know all of this stuff going on in cleveland a card like cards like this happening you know around a gigantic pay-per-view like this aiw gcw aiw again like fucking loaded loaded cards <coughs> summer slam you're not you're not going to get something like this honestly probably again you know and we're you know we're offering our portion you know you can see both aiw shows for 25 dollars total actually lower than that because fucking steve guy is fucking drunk posting fucking 50 percent <laughs> off coupons for fucking saturday which i don't think he was supposed to do but he's tweeting trying to get his personal brand over or something did you see that <laughs> steve 50 use the code steve 50 to get 50 percent off on general admission tickets so yeah i mean they it's even cheaper only for saturday them. yeah only for the saturday only- uh Slammed on six. You can get five dollar tickets if you use the the Steve guy personal brand. Uh, Steve, what is it? Steve fifty. Steve fifty. Steve fifty. Is that how old he is? Or? <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> no, uh, five. I mean, so, five dollars so though could, for that show. I mean, come on, that's crazy. So you can see both AIW shows for twenty dollars this week. Twenty dollars. That's crazy. It's, it's a deal right there. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. You know, like you said, come out Thursday, then you got GCW Friday, then us again Saturday uh, before SummerSlam, then hit Summer, or, you know, right in a row. Bing, bang, boom. You know, what better? Like you said, I mean, it, it's, it bears repeating again. I mean, you're not going to see a wrestling weekend like this in Cleveland. I mean, when are they ever going to do this again? Even if they do it again, it's not going to be for a long, long time. You know, C- Cleveland no, they're not get bringing, stuff like this. They're not bringing a gigantic stadium show to cleveland wwe is not and i mean you know i I don't know that aew would you you know what i mean like so uh, this is probably it you know what i mean (coughs) well keeping going forward in this card uh more tag team action uh classic four-way tag aiw style we got latinos most wanted banging matthews to Infinity and Beyond, and Los Desperados, which is Arez and Gringo Loco. I mean, that is four, four of the hottest tag teams, you know, that right there alone. You know, talking about $15 tickets. I mean, geez, Louise, that is an insane match. I mean, that's going to go hard. I mean, we, we, we've seen a lot of these, you know, out of these teams, aside from, you know, Gringo and Arez, uh, Desperados. But, you know, we've seen Latinos, Bang and, Bang and Matthews, Two Infinity and Beyond, a bunch lately. And those three teams, I mean, go crazy as hell. Obviously, people know Gringo Loco, but if you don't know Arez, I mean, Los Desperados is a great tag team. I mean, this is this is going to be an incredible match. You ever buy a ticket, plane ticket from Mexico City? It's expensive. <laughs> I have not, no. Please come out and support the show on Thursday night. I mean, this show, this match is going to go fucking crazy, though. I mean, honestly, like, I, like I, I, here's the, my problem is I don't even know how, like, how to match order this show. You know, right. like yeah. it's nuts. Uh, this match is gonna be fucking insane. Uh, like I, I don't like. I don't know this, this. This by all like expectations could be the greatest match in AEW history as far as a live experience goes. This four way yeah. tag, it has every element to be like one of the greatest live things to ever happen at an AW show. Yeah. Yeah, when you told us this one, I was like, man, that's that's uh that's some planning. Like that's that's some booking right there, man. That that's gonna go hard. 
I mean, you got Latino, Latino's most wanted, and Bang and Matthews, two teams we've seen a lot of really crazy high flying kind of guys. Uh, Arez and Gringo, also two big time high flyers, crazy flip, you know, and then you got the, the architects in there, Cheech and Colin. Um, I can only imagine the things that Colin's going to come up with to do to these guys. Uh, I mean, it's just going to be incredible. Yeah, I mean, Gringo Loco, uh, this is, you know, Base God. this is his. You know this. This is his. You know this is his. His element. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I, this is one that I'm just like. I'm just gonna give no instruction at all. Just, say, <laughs> just you guys know what to do. <laughs> Have fun, fellas. <laughs> I don't, you know, flip a coin. I don't even care. Just fucking go. Yeah. Hell yeah. Not. Not. I don't know what else could be said about that one. To be honest. <laughs> Um, going forward, a hard-hitting match. We got a return. Somebody we haven't seen in a while. Uh, one called Manders coming back to, to take on Dom Graney, the bone collector. Uh, I think this is going to be a great match. Two guys that have been really w- well road-traveled lately, really getting out there. You know, Dom's everywhere. Manders, you see a ton of places. Uh, two guys that maybe mixed it up in the past before going to gonna get in there and just kind of, you know, beat the hell out of each other and see, you know, see who comes out on top. The boss of the planes is returning to AW. Uh, it's been a couple, you know, a couple of years, I think, at this point. Uh, you know, he's been in and out over the years. You know, uh, early in his career, and you know, he's he's gone out and kind of, you know, traveled the roads, and you know, just uh, one of those guys that has just, uh, you know, refuses to kind of uh, give up and have doors shut in his face, and just keeps going, and you know, keeps learning and keeps grinding and working hard and you know he's just uh turned into one of those just undeniable talents that is just uh you know uh, kind of blossomed into this you know must see you know attraction at this point and uh couldn't be prouder of uh you know manders he's one of the hardest working guys in all independent wrestling and uh you know i thought this was the perfect show uh, to bring him back and feature him on, and uh, you know, I thought uh, you know, put him in there, him in there with Dom, <laughs> so they can just go out there and just have a, you know, no nonsense, go out there, hit each other really fucking hard, you know, just uh, beat each other up, match. You, you know, I think that's just that's one of the things that people are going to want to see. Like I said, this is a this is a show that's going to have a little bit of everything, and you know, you're going to get a little bit of that with Broner and Kenta, but you're going to get a lot of that here with uh, Dom and Manders. Oh, yeah. And I mean, diff- a little bit different styles in each of those two matches. But yeah, just like you said, I mean, something for everybody, you know, and, and, and looking forward on the card. You got a women's match on this card. You got Jocelyn, the gold standard in AIW versus Rachel Armstrong, somebody who's been around a few times in AIW, kind of showing what she can do. And now she's going to get in there with just Jocelyn one on one, you know, and they're going to they're going to. Yeah, and Rachel, Rachel Armstrong is kind of becoming, the you know, the, the other girl in the Midwest. You know, she's yeah, uh, see her highly- everywhere you know highly featured you know everywhere else you know uh, black label all these other you know promotions throughout the midwest and <coughs> you know she's at revolver she's at you know black label she's you know kind of bouncing all over the place and she's making quite the name of, for herself and i thought she was a perfect you know a perfect girl for this card to bring in and you know get in there with jocelyn you know like this is just you know there's there's veterans on this cards. there's up-and-comers on these cards there's you know ex wwe people on these cards there's you know probably future wwe you know on these cards there's a little bit of everything on these cards and you know i thought you know rachel armstrong it was the perfect person to get in there with jocelyn i think that you know she's kind of uh you know the other you know top midwest girl yeah, definitely a big. It's going to be a test for Jocelyn. Um, I don't think she's ever seen. You know, I don't think they've ever been in a four way or anything. You know, scramble or anything like that in AIW. So, well, one know. time, yeah, one time um, at Bow Down, Bow Down, I think uh, last year, I okay. believe. My fault. Well, I'm interested to see what they do. Like you said, one on one this time and a big stage. Uh, you know, I'm excited to see Jocelyn show out on a big stage like this. You know, a big, big card, big match. Uh, I'll be excited to see what they do. Um, I going for I think it's her birthday. Week. Oh, it's happy birthday, Joss! That'll be that'll be cool. Wrestling on your birthday—that's probably gonna be fun, right? Everyone, I come believe I saw, I believe I saw her tweet that. 
There you go. Um, going forward in the match, too, uh, you know, we keep kind of hitting this home, but, I mean, I feel like this card does have something for everybody, something a little bit for the ghouls here. We got the, uh, you know, Cardcore, the the uh, blue-collar brawler, Kaplan, taking on one of the biggest names in death, mass, death match wrestling and John Wayne Murdoch, man. So, I mean, something for everybody. This one. Uh, <laughs> this was, um, you know, uh, I know I, I said Kenta was the number one draft pick, but this was the the first match booked. Uh, based on Kenta having to see what happened with the G1, uh, once you know I had kind of settled in on the concept, mm-hmm. John Wayne Murdoch was the first actual talent booked, and this was the first match signed. This was, I didn't know, you know, you never know how this stuff's going to play, uh, obviously, you know, but regardless, like, this is a match that I've always wanted to see is John Wayne Murdoch versus Kaplan. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I kind of went back and, uh, you know, I thought I thought back to, you know, some of that stuff, uh, you know, because, uh, you, you know, you saw that documentary crew was kind of following me around the day of Absolution. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that Biggins always said, you know, when we would always kind of have our, you know, back and forth was, you know, he would always kind of push like, hey, you know, sometimes you just got to book something for yourself and uh whether (laughs) people are with it or not you know like some stuff you just got to book for yourself and you know he did a lot of stuff like that and uh this was one that i was like i don't know if people are gonna be with it or not but i'm booking this one for myself (laughs) and uh also shout out to uh, chandler biggins uh by the time this airs uh july 30th uh it will have uh it's his birthday so uh, that's another reason why everyone should come out, uh, you know, July 30th, Chandler Biggins' birthday, August 1st, uh, let's celebrate for him. But, uh, <coughs> um, yeah, J- John Wayne Murdoch and uh, Kaplan was 100%. I don't know if anyone else gives a fuck about this match. But this match is 100% one that I booked for myself. Uh, whether people like it or not, I don't know. I don't care. I am going to go stand in the crowd and watch it and enjoy it and maybe i'm the only one that's gonna like it but i am gonna watch it <laughs> there that's gonna be two of us you know i'm gonna i'm all for this one uh john wayne murdoch the rabbit king a guy who's been all over uh doing deathmatch stuff really making his name for himself and just putting himself through punishment kaplan a guy who looks like he got into a car wreck every time he comes through that curtain this is just going to be a challenge and a test for kaplan that i'm very excited for uh, i feel like he prides himself on kind of you know stuff like this and you know haven't seen too much of Kaplan in the last few shows, you know. Sometimes you got to give him a little bit of a break for his own good. Um, you haven't so, seen him because I want him to be as one hundred percent as possible for this. That's that's kind of what I was alluding to. Yeah, I mean, we've kind of you know give pump the brakes a little bit on him because he won't do it for himself. Thorn Thorn has to take care of that for him for him. Uh, but yeah, so we got no governor. To- <laughs> he, he's got no. He's, he took the governor off. I gotta you know. I gotta I gotta put it on. I, I will say this. If anybody, if any fans want to bring any uh, any doors or any tax or any weapons within reason, no glass, by all means, you can bring them and, uh, you know, maybe give them the Pedro or something on Thursday and uh, maybe we will uh, disperse them to these two gentlemen and uh, maybe they will use them, maybe they will not. No promises, but uh, we'll see what we can do, right? <laughs> but yeah, I mean that one. That one's gonna be, you know, all these matches. I mean, we just every one we go over, it's like that could that could main event in any area. I mean, I would, I would that that main event in anything. You know what I'm saying? It's it the whole card. Um, and the going forward, typical AIW your classic six way scramble. This one I'm very excited for. We got Mikey Montgomery versus Sam Holloway versus Dex Royal versus Trey Lamar versus Tyler Jordan versus Dr. Dan. Six very different styles uh, just getting thrown in there and you know seeing what happens. This one I'm very excited for. I love a good six way scramble in AIW, and this one's got six great names in it. Yeah, I mean, this one was, you know, uh, it, it's, you know, main, it's all had to be mainstays, obviously, but this was one that, you know, just feature a lot of different guys, you know, and, and let them kind of go out and show out on this huge card and, you know, let them just kind of go nuts. And, uh, it, you know, uh, even though, you know, you can't have everybody go in, the, you know, it would be a 20 match card if we let everyone <coughs> kind of go out there and do these 
versus the versus the world shows, but uh, or you know versus you know different people from around the world. But uh, this is just six guys that I thought you know deserved to be on this card, and you know giving them the sh- you know just the chance to uh, again kind of like Kaplan take the governor off and let him go nuts. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that Bear, Bear mentioned, but we did get a little too far on this, but we do have a pre-show match. You know, I get before we talk about the uh, main event here, we do have a pre-show match. Uh, we got Shaw Mason taking on the slugger, Austin James. Uh, I'm excited for this one. It's it's almost like, you know, you kind of have to put somebody in the pre-show. I feel like you got to give the fans something, uh, you know what I mean, before the sh- you give them a little bit of incentive to come out a little early, you know, get there in the building early, not to stream it live. It will only be for the live audience, you know, so Shaw Mason versus the slugger Austin James that's one to definitely get out there early for and check those two guys out two big up you know big names in the idea yeah I think I think these two are, are two kind of uh, of the young guys with uh, super big upside you know they both have uh, little con- pockets and contingents of following uh, so we're going to see if their followings come out and kind of, you know, hopefully can set the precedent inside the building, you know what I mean? And, you know, kind of, uh, get the energy levels up, you know, that's kind of, uh, the, the hope for these, these pre-show matches is, you know, for them to, you know, go out there, tear it up and set, you know, set the precedent and, you know, get the, you know, get the energy level set, you know, for the, for the whole evening, because, you know, from there we got 10 matches that should all be fucking crazy and, uh, the expectation is that you know everything should continue to uh, get bigger and bigger throughout the night because I don't see anything that even has potential to go bad, uh, which is you know what I mean. Like that is you know I that's going to be the you know that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the main event because the whole fucking show was crazy. You know what I mean? Obviously the title match is going to go on last and, uh, you know, they have their work cut out for them, but you know, again, that is, you know, four of the fucking very best in the company. And I don't think that they're, you know, I, I don't think that they, they are taking that task lightly whatsoever. No, I mean, speaking of that match, our, our main event for the absolute title, uh, current AIW champion, Chuck stone, the affiliate with the belt taking on Alec price, versus Derek Dillinger versus Joshua Bishop. So like you said, man, four, four of the big guns in the company. Uh, I mean, every match, you know, could headline, like you said, but I mean, this one going to finish off the night strong, and I, I can't wait to see these four just absolute behemoths go at it. Um, you got some of the biggest names in independent wrestling. Um, you know, Josh Bishop out there doing his thing on TNA. If you didn't see my man, you know, giving, giving PCO a, a piece of his mind there uh, not too long ago. Yeah breaking PCO's brain stem. <laughs> that old man's crazy. I wouldn't want to fuck with Josh Bishop if I was if I was anybody, man. Uh, but then you got Alec Price, uh, a guy that you have touted here for many, many weeks and months as, you know, the best in the game in the indies right now. Um, Derek Dillinger, a guy in the company, and getting out all over. They see him on the West Coast. They see him, you know, all over Alpha One, all over these places. Derek, you know, belt, uh, a former belt holder in AIW. Uh, it's just going to be a test for Chuck, for sure. Yeah, and I think uh, all you know, any four of these guys can can walk out with the title. And this is what I this is what I will say: <coughs> um, whoever does leave as champion, their match on Saturday will be for the absolute title. So, any one of those matches that's advertised for Saturday would then become an absolute title match. Okay. So whoever whoever leaves as champion, whoever it may be, that match would then turn into an absolute title match on Saturday, and by default, be what closes the the Slam Down Six show. Yeah, very interesting. That that's you know puts a lot of stake in the game for the Saturday show. You know, too. I mean, that's that's a big one right there. Uh, you want to you want to talk about the Slammed on Six show that we got going on? Uh, if you haven't gotten tickets for that, tickets are available. You can, like you said, you can get tickets for as low as five bucks uh, using the code Steve fifty. Um, get in there. I know uh, there's two different tiers. It's pre-sale tickets. only though. Pre-sale only. You can't do it day of. You got to do it right now. Yep. Yeah. We don't wait around. Uh, Saturday that will not be available. Um, but now there's two different tiers. Uh, there's a twenty five dollar tier, twenty dollar. What's the top tier? We get a chair and then it's there's just. Gen- 30 okay 30 you get a chair and then you got ten dollar general admission for slammed slammed on sixth for saturday uh, do you want to run down the card a little bit on that one 
Yeah, I mean that's as far. That's like really all. I, I know that there's a ringside, which is you know a chair in row one or two, uh, super limited. I think uh, thirty, only thirty or forty available, uh, as far as I know. Um, and I'm going to put this disclaimer out there right now. We are not the event promoters of this, the ticket sellers, any of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are just kind of, uh, you know, we are, you know, entertainment a part of this, you know, this tailgate festival that's going on. So I want to make that, you know, abundantly clear, you know, for a lot of questions or, you know, whatever people have. We can't answer a lot of them. I can, you know, do my best to answer some of them, uh, but we're in the dark on some stuff as well. But uh, yeah, uh, we—that's that's really all I know, to be honest. You know, ten dollars GA. I, I believe it's just like free for all. You know what I mean? Standing room only. Yeah. Um, anybody that's gone down to a Browns game, I think, is pretty aware how they do it down there uh, on West Six, blocking off the street. You know open container uh in that you know that area uh, you know alcohol on the street you know bars all that stuff they're gonna have street vendors uh bars out there all that stuff <coughs> um and uh yeah i mean one to seven o'clock they're gonna have djs maybe some bands i don't know um i believe we're gonna get started around 2 30 uh 2 2 30 and then go till like five, five thirty. Uh, give people plenty of time to get into uh, the stadium for SummerSlam that starts at seven, I believe. Yeah, kind of like an all day type thing. But I mean, you know, like you said, they got the bars. Just pretty much the doors are open. You can kind of go in, get a drink, wander around with it. Uh, you know, it's like an open container type law in that area. You can't leave a certain area, but it's a pretty wide area as far as that is. Um, so if you're going down to SummerSlam. Come on down on Saturday to Slammed on Six to hang out with us. I mean, cheap tickets you can get get in for as little as ten bucks a day of five dollars if you do pre sale with the code Steve fifty. Um, get out there and check us out. Uh, the card is pretty great. I'm pretty excited. It's a completely different card, obviously from Thursday. Um, and with what you said, you know about the main event and anyone winning that, there's there could be quite a few. You know, we got a couple different possible uh, challenges for a title here on this card. Um, <clears throat> to get into the card a little bit first, speaking of, uh, you know, could be a title match, we got Dex Royal versus Trey versus Mikey versus Alec Price. So if Alec Price goes ahead and uh, and handles business on Thursday night, uh, Dex and Trey and Mikey could be looking at a title shot there on Saturday. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, and, like, we don't have to get too in, in depth on this card. We can just kind of burn through it real quick because we've sure. been going for a while. Yeah, we got a lot of questions as well too. I want to get yeah. to. I know because people had some questions. Um, going forward in the t- in the in the card, uh, if if here we go again, West versus Duke. If West can hang on to his belt, you're gonna see Duke with maybe a title shot. The belt go up against Duke. Is it title versus title? Boot versus intense belt on that one. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll have to uh, get to the talk to the boot committee. <laughs> um, going forward we got uh, another uh, if Chuck is able to retain uh, we're going to see the absolute champion if he's able to retain Chuck go up against Matt Justice returning uh, we saw Justice in an unscheduled uh, surprise appearance there at Absolution and uh, we're going to see him back here at Slammed on 6th yeah, and I, I will say uh, I made a post on the AW Facebook, but there are there's a ton of talent that's exclusive to only Thursday night, and Matt Justice is, is exclusive to only Saturday. You know, so there's a bunch of people that are only on Thursday and not on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Matt Justice is only on Saturday and not on Thursday. Yes, um, another guy you're only going to see on Saturday uh, going forward in the card: Eric Taylor versus Comic Book Man. Um, I don't know too much about this Comic Book Man. You'll have to his name inform is, me. His name is his name is Brandon uh, Davis. Or excuse me, it's comic comic dot com or something. What's the co- he represents a brand or a company, right? That's the comic book, <laughs> he, thing, isn't it? Comicbooks dot com or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he works for comicbook dot com. That's uh, comicbooks dot com. Yeah, his name his name is Brandon Davis. Uh, he were he's a huge like uh, reporter, like social media influencer, um, you know, and kind of the comic book Marvel world. Uh, also a trained 
professional wrestler um who it's pretty cool you know you know who was looking to uh you know he's in town you know obviously doing media stuff for SummerSlam and uh wanted to you know was looking to uh get a little action under his belt while he was in town uh so he is gonna get in the ring uh with eric taylor on saturday brandon davis from comicbook.com uh i mean th- this dude uh is pretty impressive Hundred forty three thousand instagram followers wow uh yeah he is yeah i mean he is the, the rock follows this guy <laughs> like i mean he is a go. pretty He's pretty big deal. You know, 331,000 followers on X. I mean, you know, followed by every fucking celebrity on the planet. Wow. Uh, you know, he's, you know, he is a who's who of uh, kind of uh, journalists in that, you know, kind of pop culture entertainment field. So I, I don't know. You, you know what I mean? I don't know what that translates to, uh, you know, people coming to see him wrestle, but uh, we're going to find out on Saturday. And uh, he's going to get in there with uh, Eric Taylor. Yeah. My apologies on the name mix-up. I just I knew it was comic book. I couldn't remember if it was comicbook.com or something. And I just, I don't know, called him comic book, man. But excited. Yeah, he he's a, another guy only Saturday. So, you know, if you want to come out and see that guy, you got to come out Saturday and check yeah, it out. Yeah, exclusive to Saturday as well. Yeah, he works for comicbook.com. I knew it was something like that. Okay, um, going forward in the card, uh, we're going to see uh, an old rivalry reignited here: PME versus Two Infinity and Beyond. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of incredible matches between these two tag teams, and uh, very excited to see him mix it up again on Saturday. Again, you know, only for the tag titles if uh, PME retains. Uh, if not, this will just be a good old fashioned attraction match that uh, we felt, you know. Uh, we have a feeling that uh, we're going to see a pretty large crowd on Saturday. And, uh, you know, we thought, w- what better than to give them the, you know, one of arguably the best rivalries and, you know, uh, sure, best sure thing matches Adam you can put out there in PME versus to Infinity and Beyond. Yeah, I mean, I think in a lot of ways this could be, you know, a preview to some fans coming down for SummerSlam that maybe, you know, maybe they didn't check out us on Thursday. You know, they're just just getting into town on Saturday. This is going to be a big preview to some of these people or other, you know, other people into the world of independent wrestling. And yeah, what better match tag team wise than to give them those two or those two teams? That's for sure. <clears throat> going forward in the card, Josh Bishop taking on one called Manders. This is going to be another hard-hitting match. I'm excited to see what these two will do. Another one that could potentially be for the absolute title if Josh walks out Thursday uh, as the champion. Which we all know is possible. Josh, just an absolute uh, beast. Uh, so you could see a lot of different title matches on this card. Um, going forward in the card, you got Joss versus Katie Arquette. Uh, those two are going to mix it up again. We've seen this match before, or seen pieces, you know, them two in, in four ways, stuff like that, all kinds of different uh, match styles we've seen them t- And this was tangle. another, you know, kind of the same thinking as the PME in the, in the To Infinity and Beyond is, you know, when we're going to be in, you know, potentially in front of a large crowd, being on West Six, you know, with this SummerSlam crowd, uh, put out something that, you know, we know is a, a good sure thing out there. Right, right, yeah. This, this is that's one I'm sure will we'll go hard for sure. Those two definitely gonna show out for the big crowd. You like to see it um, going forward. Derek versus Arez. This is a guy we talked about that was in the t- is in a tag with Gringo Loco. Some fans maybe not uh, you know know that name or as uh, as well versed in the in the the world of Arez, but. From the videos I've seen and 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 the the chat, you know how how you guys talk about him. You know what I mean. I, I'm very excited for this one. Yeah, again, an, a, another one. If Derek walks out absolute title, this could be an event. And, uh, you know, this uh, Arez is another one of those just, you know, super talented guys, you know, one of the, you know, most talked about, you know, kind of uh, unsigned, you know, freelance guys out there right now. And uh, gigantic potential, you know, and a huge test for Derek as well here. Yeah. So, I mean, any any one of those, uh, you know, format, there's a handful of matches that could, uh, depending on the outcome of Thursday, could be And there's also, pos- and I'll, I'll just throw it out there, too, you know, depending on how things go, there's a possibility that we're going to add more matches earlier in the day, uh, depending on, you know, what the event organizers want. If they want us to, you know, just get going earlier, you know, you may see some of, you know, the AW students earlier in the day, you know, in that one, you know, 1 to 2 p.m., 
you know, range. <laughs> we're just going to, you know, we're going to get there early and, you know, we, we maybe get going earlier than two. Uh, you know, we're just, uh, we're kind of, you know, at their, at their discretion, going to see what they want. But, uh, uh, I would, uh, you know, would, I would plan, you know, if you don't want to be, you know, sitting around, you know, we're probably going to get going, you know, a sure thing around two, two thirty. Okay. <clears throat> well, going forward here, uh, we got a, we did get a handful of questions on the uh, Discord. Uh, if you want to get in that Discord, join the Patreon. Uh, we just dropped a uh, backstage vlog for uh, Cybernetico uh, Trace. Um, that's up there. We're dropping all kinds of stuff on the on the uh, Patreon there. Uh, we got plenty of questions. Uh, Devin wants to know if any update on Triller adding any more shows of the back catalog. Anything that you know of some of those that uh, are getting uploaded up there? It's kind of just a guessing game with that, huh? Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I know they were doing some moving around. Uh, you know, they had uh, one of the one of the colleagues pass away at Triller, so they were kind of yeah. There's, uh, there's like a lot of moving parts it. going on. There's like a yeah. <laughs> There's like a merger maybe going on with Triller and some company. There's like uh, there's like a lot of things you know in kind of you know in motion right now there. So uh, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, I did reach out to them about some things. <laughs> um, you know, this week I'm waiting to hear back on because you know actually like our contract does expire with Triller in the next month. So. I don't know. You know, maybe we're not on Triller in a month, to be honest. You know, we're just kind of uh, waiting to see how things are going to go. Um, you know, there's a lot of kind of moving parts right now. So uh, super happy there, though, you know, just uh, kind of waiting to see, you know, where things are at with them and uh, how things are going with, you know, the merger and all this other stuff going on. Obviously, you know, uh, a huge kind of part of their team did pass away a month ago. So there's just a lot of things kind of in motion and in flux there. Yeah. <clears throat> Russ wants to know, uh, were there any names discussed for against the world that didn't work out for whatever reason? Uh, I'm not sure if you even want to say that might be keeping some of those in the back pocket, but anything you want to discuss as far as names that didn't work. I'm out? sure there were, I'm sure there were, but a lot of that stuff like leaves my brain once it doesn't you know what i mean like once the idea is filled with something else like it doesn't really remain in my brain for whatever reason you know it's just like it's just like a, a puzzle piece and once it's like the pieces fit like whatever else was trying to fit there it, like it kind of evaporates in my brain so i don't really remember like those questions are probably better for like people like dom or people that are around when ideas are getting thrown out yeah i mean that that's one too where you know stuff's actually getting thrown around right now for for jaylet and stuff like that too so it's like you know maybe you know you don't even want to say that at the moment just because you never know it might circle back around to it and right. you just there's just so much that that group chat i had to go in there today to try and find the card to uh to make the audio list for it and i had to scroll back so far to see that card so a lot of a lot of ideas are thrown around in the chat so i don't blame you for forgetting some of them <clears throat> it's just like um, shit leaves my brain like instantly sure um scott random asked he had a bunch of questions uh always appreciate you guys throwing stuff in there uh he asked is slammed on six gonna air live or will it release later on demand via patreon or triller i would imagine we're definitely not running live for that yeah we're not running live uh at all um we're gonna tape it where it goes i don't know y you know um <laughs> that's kind of tbd sort of thing maybe youtube maybe triller maybe patreon um you know just kind of wait and see um when chase gets it um which uh shout out to chase by the way uh brother is just going through it uh everyone yeah. knows about the achilles thing uh was all set to come back at absolution tore his acl i believe right and yeah. meniscus was it yeah, it was inter training to come back, had another kind of setback, and it was much worse than he had anticipated. So now out for quite a bit longer. Uh, surgery on Monday. Yeah, everybody right. keep yeah, chasing Monday. your thoughts. See yeah, if you see him at the show. Uh, I know he's usually in the back. He doesn't get around too much. But if you do see him, you know, give him some good vibes. Brother's definitely going through it, man. That's a tough one for sure. Yeah, he will be there um, Thursday and Saturday. Uh, give him some love. 
Shout him out. He's going to be miserable. He's going to hate his life. Uh, he's Oof, really going to be miserable. Bring him Zoas. <laughs> he's really going to be miserable uh, at Russell Rager for sure when he's in a cast uh, or whatever they do to you for that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so. Uh, I don't even know where we're going to put him for Russell Rager as far as like to cut the show or just what I, like, I don't even know what we're well, going to do with yeah, that. Yeah, that's not going to be like a live cut. We're not going live on that. So Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Scott Random also, he kind of asked about, you know, same similar question to, you know, the, you know, previously named shows or whatever, the back catalog, you know, the Minerva show, um, Hartville show, stuff like that. We really don't know as far as the Minerva was lost. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, cool, ass, cool ass Andy. Uh, well... <laughs> A, 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 you know, we just gave Chase some love. Now we'll give Chase a little burial. <laughs> uh, Chase Oliver, uh, the day of Minerva, was like, I'm here. And I was like, okay, do you see, uh, I don't know what I said, like a uh, French fries Ferris stand, wheel right? or yeah. something. He's like, no. And I'm like walking around. And I'm like, do you see me? He's like, no. I, I'm in a, like, I'm just in a neighborhood. And I'm like, what? And uh, Chase Oliver, uh, the day of Minerva, went to the Green Dragon Inn, the after party for Akron, instead, because somebody had put a, uh, dropped a pin as to where there would be free parking for the after party in there for everybody the following week. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Chase just didn't look and just clicked that and started driving. So, uh he went we were uh like a minute away from starting and he was an hour away so then uh cool ass andy was like i have a 300 gigabyte phone and uh i was like okay record the show on your phone and then um i don't know it didn't work (laughs) so we don't we don't really have any footage of minerva i would say if you want to see footage of minerva sign up for the patreon the backstep ronnie two legs tier because i taped a decent amount we taped a lot of stuff uh on the backstage vlog on the gopro won't be your normal you know looking footage uh you know it's going to look like gopro stuff but we definitely taped a bunch of stuff there's a lot of fun that we had with the gopro that day i think Chase, chase got there for like the last two matches i think yeah I think you'll get like two matches. Like it's like a ECW house show where they taped two matches for television situation. <laughs> so yeah, sign up for the sign up for the Patreon. We'll get something out there for you. Uh, and then lastly, he wanted to know: uh, Will you wait until after the August shows to announce the plans for the rest of the twenty four schedule? Uh, I think you've kind of hit on that a few times. We're just kind of waiting and seeing at some of that stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're you know. Um, we don't really know to be honest i mean I'm being fully transparent uh a lot thursday thursday is probably gonna hurt you know by you know not to, not to be fully negative again but it by all you know uh signs as of right now it looks like thursday is gonna hurt quite a bit uh so <coughs> um we don't really know, you know, obviously we have, uh, you know, already made adjustments to the JLIT as people have seen, um, you know, as far as the, uh, reduction in that format, new format and, uh, you know, one day and all that. Um, then, you know, we would like to still do black Friday somewhere. Uh, we did have it. We did have it secured at the temple, uh, but there, I, I don't know what's going on with that, to be honest. You know, I'm not going to really speak on that right now. I just know that there were, uh, there was a lot of weird stuff that happened right before absolution to where I don't know where we stand to where the arrangement was we're going to get through Thursday. And then, you know, we had essentially given one of our dates to GCW for Friday, and then we're going to reassess with them. (coughs) But, you know, if uh, Thursday bombs, you know, that's pretty much a wrap on the temple for sure. Uh, I would, I would have to guess because uh, from the way it sounds, there is kind of a new corporate person that is not actually at that location, but, you know, 
at their corporate offices Mm -hmm. that would does not like that that room is not full so you know they do not look at it as as a success like the actual people that work at the cleveland location look at it and they like it and you know they look at it as as a success so <clears throat> there's a lot of things in motion that we really don't know we'll know more probably thursday friday night uh but if i had to guess thursday is probably going to be the last time you see us at dump alive um and then who knows you know there's not a lot of venues in the cleveland area so uh we don't know you know we've been actively kind of trying to like i said earlier come up with a plan maybe uh do you know do something smaller at a higher ticket you know a smaller venue at a higher ticket price things like that but you know it's all kind of wait and see right now (laughs) i would uh, we're probably off of you know we're probably off in october i oh i will say this though um we are debuting in a new market on september 14th because we're being brought to a new market it's you know we're, we're being kind of hired uh it's like a paid gig um at a brewery which sounds like it could be pretty big um on September 14th. So I'll kind of put, there's going to be stuff rolling out about that soon, but uh, (coughs) we're probably off all of October. We would like to still do black Friday somewhere. And then um, probably December still in Akron. And then, you know, probably nothing in January. So, I mean, that's kind of the the loose plan. Well, sounds like if you want to see AW, sounds like you got to come out on Thursday and make sure the ship stays on course, uh, especially at the Cleveland location. If you'd like to see, I'm not trying to be. And listen, I'm not trying to be all fucking doom and gloom or whatever. You know, like you know, I'm just trying to you know put it out there and and be pretty transparent. That's just kind of uh, where where things where things lie right now uh you know it's just there's there's a lot of things that are that are at play uh right now uh but you know what i mean those are just the those are the things that that happen yeah (laughs) and i mean i feel like you try to be pretty pretty upfront with everybody transparent on the pod it's not really trying to be doom and gloom but it's more just hey this is what's up and you know we're looking you know and we're trying to see what else we can we can find, but uh, we also haven't actively really looked because, you know, we've ran pretty heavy in the Cleveland area the last few months anyway. So I do think a, a break would do us well anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, if you want to see us, come on out this Thursday. We, I'm, I'm some reading in the uh, in the Discord. There's going to be a bottle service war going on apparently. So come on, come hang out with us. Um, we got two really stacked cards this weekend. You know, get the uh, SummerSlam weekend started off with us on Thursday night at Temple Live for AIW Against the World. Uh, check out GCW Friday night at Temple, and then come back out to see us Saturday for Slammed on Sixth Street. Got a full full weekend of wrestling. Uh, some great cards. Come on out, support the brand, man. What else can be said? You know. Yeah, I mean, I I still do think that we're gonna catch some catch some positive momentum of you know everything going on in the city. Uh, Thursday night. I, I'm really not worried about Saturday. I mean, Saturday is kind of a, you know, it's a, we're it's like a we're like a hired gig anyway. But I think Saturday is going to be fucking insanely packed, regardless, because we're so close to the to the stadium. But Thursday is like the big, the big concern. You know, we we need that to we need that to go well. I feel confident. Uh, like you said, something's got to happen. Uh, I'm feeling, feeling confident for a big break here for AIW. So come on out. Uh, prove, prove us right. Just come out and see some of the best independent wrestling in Northeast Ohio. Uh, Thursday night, Temple Live for AIW against the world. Tickets as low as 15 bucks. Um, great, Plenty of great seats. So come on out. Um, anything else you want to get to, John, before we get out of here? No, I think, 
I think that's it. All right. Well, for myself, for John Thorne, for AIW, we'll see everybody this Thursday. Thanks.